Well, congratulations on season four of Manifest. So excited yeah, that it's yeah. back. Uh, what was it like getting that confirmation that you were going to be able to give Manifest fans like actual closure on the show? Exhilarating. I mean, the fa the idea that we would have finished it at the end of season three with everything that happened with Grace, with Cal, with Eden, with everything would have been just the cruelest thing I think we could have done, not only to uh, the characters, but uh, to our fans. And the first half of season four delivered like so many big revelations. Now we know like the death date is actually tied to the apocalypse and it's like, it's so much bigger now. So do you think that this final half of the season is still going to be able to focus in on those, like those very intimate relationships between these characters that we love while also dealing with this huge, like the world is ending. <laughs> Yeah, always, always. You know, I think that's what we do best on Manifest is that we um, concentrate so much on the uh, the characters, the characters' interactions with one another. And that's what's so compelling for us, I think, is that we get to play these very, very real, very emotional, very connected uh, human scenes um with all of this huge story that's happening around them and we will always always um in every episode until the very end concentrate on the characters and their journey through this this crazy thing that happened to them i know manifestors still have like so many questions and theories and like queries about what's going to happen in these final episodes do you think that most if not all of those questions that are still lingering those loose threads are all going to get tied up by the end yes absolutely every, I, everything is going to get tied up and uh, you and all your questions will be answered including the biggest question of all what happened to those passengers on flight 828 which is definitely the most pressing pressing question right now it's like did they die did everybody get reincarnated like re-brought re back to life it's like so many questions but you bring up a great point because the, the world does open up the story does open up it's not just about those passengers now now it's affecting everyone in the entire world so um the stakes have gotten much bigger and uh, much more immediate uh than they were before which definitely makes for a great final season. And I think the villain for this show, or the, the kind of villain, Angelina is still kind of a sympathetic character because she has gone through so much trauma and her like motivations are like righteous indignation. What do you think it is about her as a villain that makes her so fascinating? Because everybody I've talked to about the show just thinks she's so fascinating. Yeah, I mean, she is fascinating. One, I think it's Holly Taylor uh, is such a brilliant actress and she brings so much to the role and so much, uh, so many layers, which um, always, is, always makes for a great villain. You know, you know, there, no villain thinks they're, you, you know, no villain is the villain in their own story. And, you know, I think she thinks she's doing what is right and what she feels is right. And that's compelling in itself. Um, and I think what it does, what that character does in terms of, of Ben, for sure, is she makes people look at their own goodness versus their own evilness. And I think um, for Ben, for sure, as we go through into the second part, you know, for him to try to understand what makes Angelina the way that she is will somehow inform him about his own goodness and his own re redemptiveness uh, towards the end. And it, she's an important character in that way because I think she makes the rest of the characters really look at who they are and how they're living. Definitely. And, you know, at this, the end of season three delivered such like heartbreak with what happened to Grace. And I think that was like the most heartbreaking thing picking up with season four, because you see Ben have this really complicated relationship now with Cal, because he has this like guilt and this regret and this like, I don't want to say animosity, but he has like these very complex feelings towards his son now. And I felt like so much of Manifest has been centered around that father-son dynamic. So I was curious what it was like for you coming back and playing a completely different approach to that father-son dynamic. 
Uh, juicy. <laughs> it was juicy. It was so great um, uh, playing with Ty, and you know we were so lucky that we we uh, got him to come onto the show, and he plays it so brilliantly. Um, but it was great. It was great to be able to um, take a dynamic and take a character and in a way reinvent him uh, for the beginning of season four. And because he is in such a new place and the characters, all of the characters are in such a new place. And that dynamic between Ben and Cal is super, super complicated now because, you know, as you say, there's something deep down inside of Ben that blames Cal and uh, blames him for his mother's death because of his relationship with Angelina, which he doesn't quite understand. He doesn't get, he doesn't um, fully um, understand why he would have this connection with her. And I think that creates, you know, some really tough situations between the two of them because, you know, he's still a little boy. He, he's not a grown up. He's not an adult. And it's at a time where he needs his dad the most. And um, Ben knows that, but there's a part of Ben that just, he can't give himself over to him to be his father, which is heartbreaking and horrible. And, um, and Ben doesn't understand it either. He doesn't understand why he can't, why he can't go there. He just knows that he has these complicated feelings. So, you know, the journey between those two characters, you know, it evolves and, and it evolves even more in part two into hopefully a really beautiful place. And, um, yeah, uh, it, it, it was, you know, as an actor to be able to go in and, and you know, show a different side to these characters and how they evolved to the place that we find them in was uh, just, it, it was a gift. And obviously Ben's still grieving Grace, but I will say one scene that has definitely, I've seen talked about a lot online is the fake kiss between Ben and Sanavia in episode seven. Do you think that Ben will ever be in a place to find love again, and, you know, if the world doesn't end? <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. I think he'll be able to find it. It may not be in the way that people think, mm -hmm. or it may be. Uh, it may be in the place that people think, but I think there's definitely growth there that happens, you know, and I think uh, as we go into part two of season four, you will see, um, you know, Ben's heart open and, um, and him sort of crawling back to um, the, the Ben that we've known from the beginning, although changed for sure from this experience, but um, changed for the better, I think. And yeah, I, I think his heart opens. Excellent. Excellent. Another really fun part of season four is you make your directorial debut. So can you talk a little bit about what led up to that? Was there like a, a purpose behind why you chose that episode? I'm just so curious about the whole process. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure, absolutely. Um, I've been wanting to direct for a long time. And I, it, it's been this itch that I've had. And, you know, Jeff Rake and I had talked about doing an episode in season three. And uh, COVID hit, we didn't know, you know, how we were going to do anything, you know, nobody knew what to do in the world. So we thought that probably wasn't the best time for me to go in uh, my first time doing it. Uh, but thankfully, you know, we came back, Netflix saved us and we came back for season four. So the opportunity was there. And, you know, I, I didn't get to choose the episode. The episode was chosen for me, just the, the way that um, schedules work and, 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 and different things like that. So it, it, I luckily, this great episode fell into my lap and I was so excited that I was able to um, help tell a more 360 degree view of, of this story, a story that, you know, is so important to me. And also I felt that it was an episode and a story that we don't get to tell very often on Manifest. And it was, it was, it was taking a character, taking Cal and being able to take him out 
of the situation, of our mystery, of our drive for just a second and allowing him to live in the present and not think about all of this stuff, not think about mythology, not think about sapphire, not think about the death date, not think about any of this stuff and live for maybe the first time in his life. And that I just, I fell in love with that idea and I was just so excited about the script and so excited to um, be able to, um, you know, as a you know, as an actor, our role is very, it, it can be very singular. Uh, but as a director, I get to work with everybody. And that was my favorite part that I was able to uh, tell that story and get to play in the sandbox with the entire, the entire tribe. Uh, I just, I, I loved it. And um, yeah, and, and everybody made me look like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very good episode. You directed it very well. Oh, thanks. Was there Thank anything you. about directing that surprised you? You know, you've acted for so many years, you've seen other directors work, but being in that role was like, oh, I didn't even realize this from like my side of the camera. Um, yeah, it's not that I didn't realize it, but I didn't feel it as much. And that's the pressure of time. <laughs> time is your enemy on any set, no matter how many days you have to shoot an episode in. But the clock is always ticking and the clock is your nemesis. So that was the biggest sort of wake up call for me that I had to uh, really try to beat that ticking clock every day. And, uh, you know, preparation, prep, prep, prep. That is the clock's ne nemesis. So that's what I tried to do. I just prep my ass off and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> and of course, everybody else picked up the slack for me. Did you reach out to like any previous directors that you had worked with for like advice or like? Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. And, you know, and all of our directors on Manifest, you know, Romeo, who is our uh, producing director, who I've worked with many, 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 many times. He did many episodes of Once Upon a Time as well. We've probably done over 22 episodes of television together. So he was really my, uh, I, I, you know, I, I was, I, I, he called it. I was his shadow, so I would always send him messages from his shadow, you know, and, and questions. And he was a big, big help to me and a big inspiration to me. I, I love that guy to death. Uh, Dean White, who I've also worked with many, many times on Once Upon a Time and Manifest. Uh, he he directed uh, 402 of this season and and many other episodes for us. Um, I asked a lot of uh, a lot of questions to him and Mike Smith, who another one of our great uh, manifest directors. So I, I wherever I could, I asked everybody, everybody questions. I found, I found the most powerful thing that I could say. Um, and I think it's probably the most powerful thing anybody could say in any kind of situation like that is, I don't know. I don't know. So um, that was really useful to me. That definitely is a, a good a good way to approach it. Um, as our interview yeah. comes to an end, um, I did have to ask, you know, Manifest is coming to an end. Marvel's starting to like drop in the multiverse and like bring people back who have been previously in it. And I know Zach Levi's fan role is technically dead, but are you hoping that call might come someday? I would love to go back and play in that universe anytime, anytime at all, uh, whether it's Fandral or another character. So uh, the, the, my, my phone line is open. I will start the petition for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, this was great. Thank you. I'm going to go Thank ahead you so and much. Thanks for taking the time, Maggie. It's nice to meet you.